Hello there, this is Chanel Hitchcock. I'm the author of The Secret to Being Calm and Happy. And this is video two in the series, and it's all about sleep. And I'm going to look at why lack of sleep is bad for you, the benefits of getting a good night's sleep, and my tips to getting a good night's sleep. So let's start with why lack of sleep is bad for you. Most people don't realize that lack of sleep is a really big stress to the body. So your, when your body is under any stress, it produces increased levels of the hormone cortisol to give you energy to fight that stress. And when you've got increased levels of cortisol, your blood sugars also go up. And when your blood sugars go up, you need more insulin to bring those blood sugars down to a healthy level. If you're consistently producing higher levels of insulin, this can leave you predisposed to insulin resistance, diabetes, and definitely, gaining weight. So there is a direct link between uh, lack of sleep and gaining weight. So that's a really big motivating factor. But the other big motivating factor is that the increased levels of cortisol actually weaken your immune system. So it's directly linked to becoming unwell. So when you're having those late nights, just think about it. Just ask yourself, do you want to gain weight and do you want to become unwell? Because that is what the direct link is, unfortunately, to lack of sleep or constantly having late nights. I know it's tempting to want to stay up and watch that extra movie, but you've really got to say to yourself, look, if I stay up a little bit longer and watch this movie or, or do whatever you want to do, you're going to wake up the next morning and your body is going to be in a state of stress and producing higher levels of, of stress hormones, in particular cortisol, leaving you vulnerable to disease and potentially gaining weight because your blood sugars are increased and your insulin levels are increased. You don't want that, that's not good. Okay, they're the two main reasons. Let's look at the benefits of getting a good night's sleep. You're going to be able to manage your weight more easily. You're going to look a lot younger. I know, when I have a lack of sleep over a period of time, I start to look really old. Not that I'm, anyway, I start to look older than what I am. Uh, you're going to have increased levels of energy when you're getting enough sleep. Your immune function is going to function a lot better. Your blood sugar control will be easier and your blood pressure control will be easier. Your hormonal function and brain function will improve and your memory function will improve and your heart function will improve. So. My advice to you is that you really need to start valuing your sleep. Write it down as a goal somewhere that you want to aim for eight hours sleep every night. And you want to try and be in bed prior to 10 p.m. Because from 11 p.m. to 1 p.m., that's when your body does all its recharging. So, Try and really value it. If you value it, you're more likely to make decisions that don't keep you up late at night. You're gonna make decisions that get you in bed earlier because you're gonna see the benefit of it. But you have to value it before you change your behavior because if you don't value your sleep, you're not going to change your behavior. You're going to listen to me and go, yeah, that sounds good. I like that idea, but you won't change your behavior. So you must value it. You must create a value that you value your sleep. Now. What are the things that keep you awake or potentially keep you awake? I'm going to read out a list of them and they're quite a few. Things like noise, light can keep you awake, the wrong temperature if you're too hot or too cold that can keep you awake, snoring partner can keep you awake, uh, blood sugar imbalances can keep you awake, pain, sleep apnea, uh, caffeine, if you have too much caffeine, particularly after 4 p.m., uh, that can potentially keep you awake. I've actually found that recently I've given up most of my tea and coffee and I only have one coffee in the morning and I am sleeping so much better, so much more soundly, getting so much more of that lovely REM sleep, that beautiful deep sleep where you actually dream and feel refreshed in the morning since I've given up uh, all tea and coffee during the day and just have one beautiful organic coffee in the morning, which I really look forward to and enjoy. Uh, worry will keep you awake if you've got, uh, if you're exercising too late in the day, that can keep you awake because that will produce high levels of cortisol and so it potentially can. Best to do your exercise before 4 p.m. 
uh, and also to uh, uncomfortable bed or pillow. All these things need to be looked into. So here are my tips on how to get a good night's sleep. And I have been through quite a few periods in my life when I haven't been able to sleep really well at all, but pretty much got it down to a good routine, fingers crossed. <laughs> so sleep in a dark room, that's really important. You need to have your curtains closed, blinds pulled down, and it needs to be dark. Uh, you need to have, if you can, some fresh air coming in because fresh air contains more oxygen and you're more likely to sleep soundly if you've got a little bit of fresh air coming in. I try and leave mine open most of the time, a little bit, my window open just a little bit to let some fresh air um, in most of, the, most of the year round and uh, that really does help. As I said before, try and value your sleep because if you, won't, if you don't value your sleep, you won't make these changes. Invest in a good bed. I've invested in a really fantastic organic bed or organic mattress that's chemical free because uh, a lot of times synthetic beds have lots of uh, nasty chemicals that can potentially interfere with your sleep. Try to go to bed at approximately the same time every night uh, and that's really important because uh, melatonin is more likely to form to help you form a sleep pattern that helps you go to sleep easily. Uh, switch off all electronic devices, that's very important uh, because electronic devices actually interfere or decrease your production of melatonin and melatonin is a hormone that helps you to go to sleep and stay asleep. Uh, try and keep the temperature in your bed coolish if you can, you don't want to be too hot. You fall into a more deep sleep when you're not overheated. Uh, if you have a snoring partner, I'm sorry that you might have to consider separate rooms because you do need to get your sleep. They actually say that sleep is the number one priority in your health, above everything else. It's the base. If you get good sleep, then you can function really well. It's more important than what you eat and your exercise. You've got to get your sleep right first. As I said before, try and get to bed before 10 p.m. because your body, your body does all its recharging from 11 to 1. Don't drink too much prior to going to bed because you'll be up all night going to the bathroom. And just before you go to bed, go to the bathroom and uh, wear an eye mask to block out any light and allow yourself some time to wind down before you go to bed. Have a little wind down routine. My wind down routine is I lie on the lounge and I read a book till my eyes start to go droopy. Then I know once my eyes are droopy, it's time to head off to bed. Get some exercise during the day, but in the morning or the mid afternoon and avoid alcohol because initially it might help you go to sleep, but it does actually wake you up a short time later and it interferes with your REM sleep, which is that really important deep sleep that you need to recharge. So, and importantly, if you do find yourself in the middle of the night and you're tossing and turning and you, you can't sleep, don't stay in bed. Uh, don't lay there tossing and turning because otherwise what happens is you develop this neural pathway that says, I can't sleep, I have a problem. Get out of bed, go and make yourself a nice small cup of chamomile tea or perhaps a small cup of warm milk or something warm. Don't start eating though. Uh, and then just do something to help you to wind down that represents calm for you. Maybe that's reading a book, but I wouldn't advise you to be talking uh, on the phone or watching TV or anything like that. Try and keep it very simple and even try and do a little meditation if you can. And then try and go back to sleep after that. Now, if you've tried all those things and you're still having problems, I advise you to go and see your doctor and have a consultation because it could be some of the medications that you're taking that's keeping you awake. I recently started to take a supplement and I found that supplement was keeping me awake. So you do have to be vigilant. I also take um, melatonin, which is a bioidentical hormone, which helps you to sleep. And you, you'll need a doctor's prescription for that if you're interested in getting for it, but it's very effective, it's very safe. Uh, and I recommend you get the compounded version. Look, I hope some of these tips have helped you and I certainly hope that you are able to get a good night's sleep because you'll feel on top of the world and be able to perform and enjoy your life so much better. So in gratitude and as always, it's great making these videos. I really enjoy them and I hope they help. Thank you.